Hello guys, this is the Polyglot Programmer and today we're going to talk about trends and we're going to talk about what they are and when you should use them. And this is just an example as you, as you can see here on the screen. There's a lot of things going on here for my game Kitchen Madness, which by the way, you can wishlist it on Steam. And there is a fade in, there is a fade out, there are cards flying over. Uh, for flying all over the place and for a lot of these things I am actually using a uh, twin and not an animation player and um, and that's the first question that comes to mind right so why would you use a twin instead of an animation player a twin is for the most part lighter than an animation player animation player Right. So a lot of times, uh, so in a lot of situations for uh, for simple animations where you uh, most of the time will require uh, numerical uh, property change or uh, interpolation, actually, <coughs> interpolation, sorry, interpolation, you would use a twin. So for example, if you're trying to change uh, an alpha right so you're fading in or fading out something uh which is a float or you're trying trying to change a position of something which which could be a vector two or vector uh three or you could try to change the scale of something which is also a vector two or three and for all of these things you would use a twin uh, at least it could also use an animation player, but a twin would be a lot lighter. But don't think that twin will be the answer for everything. Because, for example, on this game that I'm working on right now, it's called the Dream Runner. I have this cool effect here where I have tiles going up and down. My on my first implementation of this, I actually tried to use a twin, and my uh, my frame rate went down the drain. So twin can get very heavy when you get to this scale where I have hundreds of actually thousands of them uh, on my on my map at the same time. And if you want to follow this game, don't forget to wish listen on Sims called Dream Runner is really easy to find. Uh, anyway, coming back to Sim, uh, coming back to twins. So twins twin have four re four methods that are really important, right? One is a twin property. The other one is a twin uh, interval. The third one is a twin callback. And the fourth one is a twin uh, method. So uh, we're going to go into each one of these guys, but I'm going to go. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that the most important ones and the ones that you're going to use most of the time are twin property. Uh, you need to spell correctly and twin callback at least these are the ones that i use most of the time right a twin property will uh and if we if we go to godot and type f1 and we look for twin you find the documentation here right so a twin property will get will take an object will take a property actually of an object and will uh change this property to a target value so whatever value modulate was is going to interpolate into this other value right here and the fourth and last parameter is the time so this interpolation is going to take one second right and the good thing about the twin is that it happens one after the other uh, mo uh it happens one after the other by the foe because when you create a twin, you can actually set a variable called uh, you can have actually change a parameter, uh, a property which is called parallel. And, and if you set to true, then the then the twinners, which are each one of each one of these guys right here, they're going to happen at the same time. So, for example, if you had set this to uh parallel equals true then he then this twin would change the modulate property and the scale at the same time since it's not using uh parallel here it's going to stay one second on this once this is done 
it's going to then stay one second on scale and 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 last but not least is calling callback callback is basically a twin step also that calls a function right so here you're passing a callable you you're passing a callable that means that you're not actually calling the function you're just passing hey this is the function that you need to call and whenever it's time you're gonna call this guy right so this is what's happening right here um and going back to our little explanation here uh, other than that you have an interval right which basically adds a delay in between your tweeners animations right and you also have a twin method right a twin method it's a mix between a twin callback and a twin property why because the twin method will basically call the method and pass the the property uh into the method at a certain duration so for for every step of that uh twin interpolation is gonna call that method and pass the current value as a parameter for that uh that method uh to be honest i rarely use this guy i usually just use property and uh callback uh let's say when you want to move something from one place to the other and then you want to get rid of it which is exactly the example that this guy has right here so this guy what he's doing is that he's changing the modulate property of the sprite uh and it's taking one second then it's scaling to nothing right uh, uh and also one second and then it's 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 queuing up this guy to be free and on memory and um and this is pretty much how twins work there's not much to it uh one important thing about twins is that twins are only code there are no nodes that you can drag and create a twin no there's there's no such thing the only way to create a twin is via code but as you can see here in the example, and by the way, to get to this example, all I did is all I did is type F1 inside my Godot and I type twin and you can do that for any other uh, node or class from Godot and you're here in the help. Um, and that's it. And as you can see here, it's super easy to create a twin. You can create a twin uh, either by your scene three which is usually um got you usually get it like this or by your node that uh inside any class that inherits from node which is pretty much uh almost everything on godot you can just you can just call it create twin uh there there's not a big difference uh in in either one of these guys uh, right here, you can just do this, uh, create twin, and they, they're gonna, you're gonna have the same effect pretty much. Uh, so you don't have to, to worry, worry about it. All right. So now let's go, uh, and do just a little example. Although I think the examples from the documentation, they're really good, but, uh, there's nothing like a real thing, right? So here. To be honest, I didn't really think about what we're gonna do, so let's let's try to come up with an example right now. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a user interface. Uh, here, uh, I'm gonna add a little panel. I like to have a panel in the back. Okay, panel, great. Uh, let's let's add. Is that a button? Oh, it's used. All right, so let's uh, add a button here. Uh, okay, start. Uh, this is not a UI tutorial, so I'm not going to waste too much time explaining what I'm doing here, right? So layout, transform, okay, yes, now the button, here, awesome mm, all right 
Um, every time I click this button, this is gonna happen. Cool. So let's start by just creating a twin here. Var twin. I always like to give it a type. In the example, you're not gonna find a type, but I always like to give it a type to everything that I do. So get three, create, twin. there you go. We have our twin. So what exactly are we doing here? So uh, when we create start, let's say that, uh, uh, demo. all right, let's, uh, then that we have a card or of some sort, right? So let's add a texture uh, rec. Uh, it's right here. Let's let's add our very famous the do icon from here. Uh, let's see layout x uh, fifty and b fifty just so we're and then add the other uh, ta -da -da. okay minus 50 okay, so that's that's the value that I want I'm gonna go from 50 yeah cool so let's try let's see what happens what we what we're gonna try to do here is that when we press start, we're gonna move this guy from here to here and with a twin. So to do that, uh, we're gonna first drag this guy over here, right? Uh, create twin. And now we're gonna do twin, twin property. Uh, so what object do we want to run the twin on here this guy uh property so the easiest way to get a property is to come here find the inspector right click property copy property path uh, position uh what's the final target value that we want it's a vector two uh and I can't remember the value exactly, but I think it was something like 970. Uh, and let's keep it 260 here. And let's do that in one second. Awesome. So now let's uh, yeah, select current. Awesome. This is perfect, right? So now after we get to the end, what we want to do is that we want to twin, let's do another twin, property, twin, callback, uh, here, this time we want to change the scale, right, and let's do vector to zero, I think, uh, or two, uh, let's see. Okay, let's do this. Oh, not here. Click there. Oh, there you go. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, the offset. Our guy is 164 by 164. Let's do this. This may look a bit better. Uh, boom. Let's go. Awesome. Uh, but let's do. Let's let's make use of one other guy here. Let's use the twin interval. And let's make him wait for uh, not one second once he gets to the end before he scales down, right? One and boom. And last but not least, the last one that we're gonna call is callback. Uh, and we wanna call, we wanna set this guy free. And what we will do is called kill free remember when you're passing a callable you're not calling the method so you do not need the parameters the, the parentheses uh but if i do this i'm actually freeing my control which is the guy that i have my script assigned to you actually want to call kill free on your text rec texture rec so all all i'm gonna do is this and there you go and if we actually if we run this and we keep an eye on our remote, 
uh, we should see our text extract disappearing from the tree after this is done. And there you go, because it was free. And that's it for today, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I know this is kind of uh, it's a very big cliche of asking you guys to like and subscribe, but you're, you guys are the ones that keep the channel going. I hope you like this, this tutorial. Uh, please let me know if you have any comments or questions. Add them to the comments below and I'll see you next time.